I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna mess up your last name. Can you can you correctly give me your last name? Yeah, it's um uh, I'll phonetically help you guys. So Wong W O N G, but add an S H in front of it. Schwong. Schwong. Okay. Yeah. I. I, that probably wouldn't have been the first thing I said. So I'm glad I, I had you hold my hand through that. So I'm just going to jump right into this. I'm, I'm, I'm giddy. I'm so excited, Jay, to, sure. to have you here today. Um, I, I want to let you introduce yourself to our listeners, but I, I can give you at least a brief. This is, uh, this is Jay Shuang. Um, Jay is in Shanghai at the moment. It's, uh, I believe, Monday morning for him, Sunday afternoon Monday for morning, us. Monday morning, 8.30, yep. Um, and I want to be real clear with everybody. This is, we've, we've corresponded a little bit over, you know, the social media world, but Jay was one of those awesome people that was kind enough to respond to my inquiries, and we're, we're going to kind of get to know each other through the episode, I hope, today. But, Jay, I'll, I'll hand it over to you so you can better introduce yourself. Yeah, um, my name is Jay. Uh, my IG handle is Shanghai Soul. Shanghai like the city, um, Soul like the bottom of your shoe. Um, uh, I don't. I mean, I'm just a regular, regular guy that likes sneakers. Um, you know, uh, uh, social media is not my uh, way of making money. Uh, I'm a teacher um, at Shanghai American School. I teach fifth grade. I've been here for ten years now. Um, yeah, I mean, but shoes have always been a uh, kind of like a side hobby of mine. And I started my IG page in like 2015, I think. I was like my first post. I had three likes and two of them were from my family members. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of like blown up from there. I mean, I don't want to, I don't like to say that I'm an uh, influencer or a KOL. Gotcha. Um, but, you know, but I, I, I definitely um, have a passion for kicks. Um, you know, I know, I know a couple of things about them. I have some friends that work in the industry. And um, as I've gotten more and more involved in social media, it's kind of like helped me understand shoes uh, exponentially as well. So I'm, I'm still learning just like everyone else. We're happy you came on the show. We have these like fundamental tenets and for sure one of them is kicks um i was actually in the warm-up jay before you came on i was complaining because it's snowy here in detroit and i have all of my shoes nicely cleaned and ready to go but i haven't worn really a single pair of them in months so i have to imagine that it wasn't 2015 when you started the instagram that you you got your first pair of ones or whatever your your uh your 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 preferred is yeah you know? i know um, that's a lot yeah, of what you're doing now but Definitely my preferred uh, shoe of choice is the Jordan 1, much like a lot of other people. Um, but it's funny because I was always, when I first started, I was always really into basketball shoes because um, I, I still play to this day. I'm a big basketball fan, fanatic. Mm -hmm. uh, I watch, I play. And um, right when I moved to Shanghai in 2011, um, my buddy that was out here and he was, he's a big sneakerhead too. And he was like, why do you have, why do you collect shoes that have no value at all? <laughs> he's like, you just buy basketball, you buy like Kevin Durant shoes and you bought like six colorways. And these are not even that special. Like, <laughs> why do you do, why do you do that? And I was like, well, because I wear, I wear them because they're comfortable. And these are the shoes that I like to go with. And I like to have different um, sure. different colors and I like to match the socks and then do all that and then I thought about it and I was like he's right like it's weird that I have eight pairs of a very generic basketball shoe and cool. then I was thinking I was like if I'm going to start a collection which one would I go with and I actually did it uh, with a practical um, like focus is because I know back then a lot of people were collecting shoes and then the foam would deteriorate after a couple of years, you know, and they were like, you know, this, you can't wear them anymore. The second you wear them, it'll crumble. It's because just the, the materials that they use to make certain uh, Jordans, yeah, they'll fall apart. So like Jordan threes, Jordan fours, the mm -hmm. foam and the midsole will crack and, and they're, you can't do anything with them. And I was like, okay, which pair, which pair can I 
hoard for the longest and not have to worry about that. Whoa, that that's was, a practical approach. I'm impressed. <laughs> and that and that was the Jordan one because there's no foam in the midsole. Sure. There's no foam in the shoe. It's just pure rubber, rubber, rubber midsole with leather. And the leather will crack, but um, if you take good care of it and you can still, I mean, that's the that's the look nowadays. It's just the vintage look. A little so, patina I mean, on it. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. The older they are, like people are spending three thousand dollars on nine on pairs from 1985. Like they're going, you know, to the OG right now. So um, so that's that's how I started with my ones collection. And it wasn't until I think 20, maybe like 2012, 2013, when I got my like it wasn't my first pair of ones I've ever bought. I bought them in high school and middle sure. school, but um it was the first pair that I was like, okay, I'm gonna really take care of these. And now I probably have about 95 pairs of ones. Okay. <laughs> so you're kind of the, like it's interesting how sneakerheads come to the market too. And, and I think a lot of people almost assume that sneakerheads are held over basically man children, but you're a great example of coming to it. I think we should, we should hold your example. Hi Jay, uh, coming to it as an adult, as like almost like a practical uh, uh, collection approach, you know, yeah, I, I did you know? buy something that would just disappear, disintegrate on me. Right. right? Like, I was like, this is right. That, that would make me feel terrible. Like if I amass this collection and really right. all I have to do is just look at them. It started, and it doesn't sound uh, like you're building a, a collection that you lost from yesteryear, you know, that came through as childhood that you either had or you always wanted that kind of a thing, which I think a lot of, you know, sneaker heads get into it as adults yeah. that way. Um, yeah. it's, it's a pure, it's a pure kind of design thing. Are you that way about other stuff in your life? Or like, are you a design fan? Or are you an art fan or, um, a fashion fan on other yeah I mean, kind of similar uh, I, I definitely would not consider myself a, a an art connoisseur um but i'm definitely into fashion um and and with the sneakers thing i mean i grew up uh, i was born in 83 so um i'm 37 right now and it's totally um I mean, 90s basketball is like where it's at for me. Like that's mm -hmm. where that's the era where I grew up. So, yeah. you know, that whole nostalgia with East Bay magazines and slam. Definitely, magazines, yeah, yeah, I'm there's still, roots there. For like, sure. so, so even though even though I, it was my collection for ones didn't start like going back to hunt for pairs that I didn't have growing up. I feel that way about 90s basketball shoes. So like, you know, Fila okay. Grand Hills. Charles Barkley, Air Maxes, yeah. like those, Answers. like that. Yeah, 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 for sure. Like questions. And and so that's the thing for me where um, I definitely have that hardcore nostalgia factor when it comes to certain basketball shoes. There's this really cool kind of wave that's going through comedians and sneakers right now. So I'm not sure if you're a comedy fan, Jay, but um, specifically like Gerard Carmichael, um they're like uh uh some of the like you know rogan joe rogan crew mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. a lot of them are, are sneaker heads and they're bringing forward like uh you know these really cool pairs from um guys like the shoe surgeon who i'm sure you're familiar with yep, yep, um, yep. Our, our, our listeners if you, if you haven't ever you know if you really want to kind of understand the the way and i think the shoe shirt shoe surgeon even runs a school for learning to um specifically work on ones in in different ways um but it's cool to see how that just like weaves its way through the fabric of time right from somebody who um you know remembers east bay catalogs which includes all three of the guys on this show for sure um all the way down to you know this like high designer end of things that continue to get on tv um or maybe it's it's streaming networks now not not tv really you know so it's such a cool part of it so let's let, let can i ask like a couple of questions mike i yeah, know i'm like totally right taking now. over the waves no, no, just go i'm so excited and interested in all this that i'll be a fly on the wall for now keep going there's don't worry two i'll get it people there's two groups that i want you to know so much about who feel about and get to share your your collection with you one is your family so i want to know like what if, if you're fortunate enough to still have your parents around either your mom or your dad pick one of those two people um and like you know what do they think about your collection and then two is like your students like how does that filter its way through um in the way that you're able to to lead a classroom every day um because that's for sure you know part of of what you do i'm sure yeah um so i'll start number one um, with my family, both my, my mom and dad, um, are still around, you know, thank God. 
Uh, they are both living in Taipei, Taipei, Taiwan. Okay. Um, it's funny because growing up, like I said, I was a big basketball shoe person. Like I would just buy basketball shoes. Um, and I think in high school, I probably had maybe 10 pairs. And that back then was like, that's a lot. That's a lot. Like, you got For a high lot of school kid. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. But it wasn't, it wasn't anything. Uh, it wasn't anything expensive in the, in the sense that like they were worth a lot of money. I mean, obviously, you know, being able to, to, I was lucky enough to have my mom, you know, be able to afford basketball shoes for me every basketball season. Cause I played on the team and everything, but mm -hmm. um, they, they weren't like grails, you know, yeah, like they weren't. Yeah, I, don't, I don't remember yeah. anyone having shoes in high no. school. Even if you had those shoes, people weren't talking about it. Right. Oh. Like some people might've had some roached out ones in their closet, but in high school, no one was talking about it. No, yet, for right? sure. Okay. For sure. Okay. So, so I definitely had basketball shoes. Um, and, and my mom used to always make fun of me cause she's like, how many feet do you have? Right. Like, sure. What's the deal? Um, my dad never, never really said anything about it. My mom used to get on me a little bit for, for having, um, you know, like eight or nine pairs, but it's funny because I didn't really start my collection I didn't really start my collection until I moved to Shanghai. And that's when I was already an adult. That's when I was 27. Okay. So my parents never have really seen the full extent of oh, okay. my, uh, my, 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 uh, my hoarding. Problem. They live, fa they live far enough away that they don't come. Cause that's going to be one of the questions that comes up later in the show. Fair warning yeah. is like, how do you store? Cause listen, right. for sneakerheads, especially adult sneakerheads, you know, that space yeah, I mean, is size 10, size 10 and a half. Like that, I'm a size 10, 10 and a half. Like those boxes are not small. No, no. no. So yeah, my, <laughs> my, my parents have never seen the full extent of my problems, but, but, but they know, they know of it. <laughs> sure. So, okay. Same for because, me. Because when I go back to Taipei, like I'm always on the hunt. I'm like, I'll, you know, um, yeah, I mean, you I'm get sure we'll 10 new pairs of shoes. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm like, sure we'll talk about it later. But like during the pandemic, I was in Taipei for nine months. Like that was not planned. Mm. Um, stuck so, in Taipei, basically. Yeah, stuck, yeah. Stuck in Taiwan for nine months. And so um, during that time, you know, I gotta get shoes, man. Like you gotta I gotta do just... something. You gotta do something, right? I mean, I don't know if you were you getting your ball on. Like, you, I don't know what you could do. You definitely could still shop. Yeah, though. the, yeah, the and shopping so... world didn't stop. Yeah, exactly. I haven't but played in a year. I don't know if you're able to play where you are, Jay, but I haven't played in an entire year. I was actually just. It was two weeks ago. Today was the last time I played. Um. So I mean, I. I know we'll get into it in detail. I've been playing. Things are open here. So, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll definitely share my experience about, you know, how COVID has hit this part of Asia and, and, and all of those things. But, um, yeah, so, so number one, my parents don't really know how bad it is. Like, they, they see me in, like, short spurts, and they're like, my mom will be like, you know, great, like, your wife, uh, that's, my, that's my wife's name. Her name is Grace. Okay. Like, Grace must, must hate it. I would hate it. Stop. Uh, yeah, no love, just kind of ridicule. Kid. Yeah, stop doing that. Like, stop <laughs> doing that to her. Like, all this stuff. And my dad is just like, "Oh, your collection is pretty cool. Like, um, yeah, nice. How many followers yeah. do you have on Instagram now? I want to see. Like, that's awesome. So yeah, your so, dad so, is actually kind of supportive, and and he's into it because you're into it. He's not. He's not against it. Let's just put it that way. He's not against it. I love um, that. I love yeah, that. and my mom is like, you know, you, you, that's too much. Like, you're out of control. You oh, yeah, it could be baby clothes or something, right? Like, I mean, she's just being super practical. And here's, right. here's sure. your dad who's like, wait a minute. People from Hawaii are calling you to talk to you <laughs> about your shoot? Like, I don't know. Yeah. It's funny because I, I have a similar. It surprises me sometimes the interest that my dad has taken in certain things later in my life, you know, because totally. earlier totally. on, it was, it was a lot more kind of like discipline and not so much entertained by the things I was totally. entertained by. But totally. yeah, when I see those glimmers nowadays, I'm like, Oh, he just wants to be a kid too again. You know? Yeah. The first time, the first time I got my tattoo, um, I came back to visit my parents and my mom, the first thing she said, she like hit me across the back and was like, why'd you do that? She's like, why'd you do that? And I was like, what do you mean? It's my body. She's like, no, it's my body. Like, no, no. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
you don't do any of that and then I go home and and my mom was like my mom was like look at what your son did and my dad took out his cell phone. He's like, that's cool. Let me get a photo. Of it. Like, <laughs> that's that's the dream, dude. Doing well, stuff that our dads that's, think that's are cool. It. That's exactly it. Um, yeah. Uh, but then to go back to Ryan's uh, second point, which is how it um, kind of like filters into my classroom. Um, I don't think there's a single person at the school who doesn't know that I'm the shoe guy. At nice. School. Okay. Um, what grade are you, Jay? Like, Sorry to like, cut you off. I teach fifth grade. They're they're fifth grade. ten. Okay. Yeah, they're like nine okay. to eleven years old. Yeah. Sure. Um, and I I work at a at a school that's pre K three up until seniors, so call, um high school seniors. Oh. So they're from three years old all the way until eighteen. So it's a fully you know middle elementary middle high school all on the same campus. Uh, we have about like I want to say maybe like 15 1600 students okay i mean oh, not that big yeah. for that that many grades yeah i mean yeah so it's about it's about like 100 110 per grade something sure. like that um but you know i help teachers at the school acquire shoes um you know you are uh, the shoe i mean like i'm the, I, I'm the shoe guy I got to hear guy. more about this. Like how, how long you've been at that school for? Because I mean, like what I got other buddies that, you know, that teach my wife is a teacher. Yeah. Um, and my wife has learned like, yeah, no, I, she wears, she's um, K through five. So mm-hmm. my wife has very much learned that the way she dresses can be entertainment to the kids. And if you got their attention, that's, that's two, at least two thirds of the battle. Um, totally. So yeah, totally. she's got, you know, she's got her sneakers and like the, the fashionable girls at school, they know, they know, yep, like, they know. no, Miss senate has got like, she's got yeah. her Stan Smith's and she's got like, yeah. so dude, you know, I, but I can't imagine, I mean, the, the, how big sneakers are now and like Jay, man, yeah, you're super humble, dude, but you're anybody with 90 plus pairs of what, like. Your collection's absurd, man. So I'm just curious at how, like, how did it first, you just started wearing them into school? Like, is it pretty uh, formal or? No, uh, like for, for us, uh, for us, for the teachers, I mean, like I'm wearing like a undefeated sweater plus khakis and okay. like, Jordans right now. So it's like, <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty casual. Um, okay. I don't, I don't, uh, I have like, photos of jordans that kids have drawn and they've given to me so like that's hanging in my room i have like uh my the poster that hangs outside my classroom that's like my little bulletin board right outside my room is um bugs bunny doing the michael jordan rare air oh, yeah. pose where he oh, spreads yeah. his thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. and it says um and it says um hair air like h-a-r-e yeah. right like oh yeah no um, i remember that and it says, <laughs> why and it, instead of saying why uh why roman you can fly it says why hop when you can fly right like it's just mm-hmm. i got um i actually have like sneakers in the room um you know just like single pairs just dangling and stuff so the kids like they they know that like once they come into my room it's like we're talking hoops and we are and if you oh, have man. new shoes to bring them in like show me the kids in my room, I mean, they come in and I would say by by January, half of them are wearing like Nikes or Jordans really? or something. Okay. And all they want to do is just show me and be like, Mr. Schwong, look what look what I got for Christmas, look what I got for my birthday. Oh my god. Um man. I mean, I don't want like it's weird because I don't wanna I never say like, Hey, you guys should get some new shoes. Like yeah, I would never yeah, yeah. influence them to be like, go, go ask your parents for new kicks. Right. Like, or, sure. you know, God forbid, like shame a kid for wearing some yeah, like, yeah. beat shoes. Right. Like I would never, ever, ever do that. But I, I mean, I think just by natural means, like we all grew up like that too. Right. Like you look up to someone and you just want to like, dress like them or talk like them or act like them and um you know i try to do it in a way that i will show like if i pick up something new like i'll bring it to school and i'll do like a show and tell and i'll like show them um sure. i picked up a pair of dunks 
uh, not too long ago. They're, they're um, with collaboration with a company in Europe called Civilist. It's a skate shop and they change colors. They're a heat pattern, they're heat oh, transfer. Yeah, so, yeah. so they're all black, but then when you wear them on foot or if they get exposed to some heat, um, you can see like the kind of like the heat wave pattern that starts showing. And I showed oh, that, okay. like I put a candle next to it and I showed it to them and their eyes were like, what is that? That's magic. Like, how does that happen on shoes? Um, so I'll, I mean, I just like to share it with them. I share my passion with them. They know that that's what I'm about. Um, you know, it's funny because I also coach the varsity basketball team and, and I want to uh, okay. talk about that a little bit too, because yeah. I have certain connects um, in the shoe, like I said, in the shoe uh, business out in Shanghai and my buddy at Converse, he sends me shoes to give to the kids. And That's so cool. I don't know if you guys yeah. have seen the videos that I've done, um, but I've done it twice now where um, not this past winter, but the winter of 2019 before, you know, um, COVID hit, um, I dressed up as the Grinch. I was going to say I, the Grinches, right? I did see, yeah. I didn't see the video, but I saw the picture you shared of yeah. that. And oh, so I dressed up as the Grinch and then they had to like shoot for them. And then um, we did a little like, giveaway activity and then they all walked away with brand new basketball shoes that we wore in our tournament so it's like we, it's just like just to bring it's just team bonding and to bring like unity to the team and like let them know that hey sure. you're not getting this because i have connections you're getting this because like first of all it's it's not like i'm going out and spending my own money on them because yeah. that would be incredibly expensive i mean you know <laughs> right. i would love to do something like that but it's the fact that um, you know, we want to bond together and you're let you guys know. Team. Yeah, like, yeah, you're on this team. This We're is all one. This, yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, I've, I've been able to do that two years in a row for the high school team. Um, I don't know if that's going to continue next year. I keep telling the kids, I like, don't expect free kicks every year. Um, Damn, no, but dude. that's, I yeah. can't even imagine. I mean, when we got our jerseys, like the normal stuff you expected right. to get, but a pair of, I can say, I, I played three sports year round eight until I was 16, 17. I never got a pair of shoes. Never. Yeah. Not a single oh, time really? of any sport. No. We got like, shoes. We, we, my team got shoes. Even but I mean, had, I think like, it was it just happened to be because it was like the school that we were at. Yeah. Um, right. They were convert. They were some bunk ass converse, though. Yeah. You weren't excited about them. They, they were, were unique. They weren't hard to get. the 90s you know? era of team shoes, right? We're yeah. this, all the same age demographic. They were some, um, you know, I, I don't even know. But they were probably named Converse Team One, yeah, Tom, right? Converse Team Star One, you the know. Lowest tier. They were the lowest. But they came with bags, yeah. warm ups. So proud. So, okay. So let's talk a little bit. We could go on and on and drone on and on. Um, and if we had any listeners left by the end, Jay, we would talk all about sneakers for like four hours. But we should probably talk a little bit about what and how. Um, I, I take it that that you didn't just wind up there uh, teaching fifth grade. Um, in fact, I, I understand that from you know a little bit of, of what we understand about each other. But let, let's take it a little bit back about like your youth, because it's pretty exciting to kind of hear about the way you, you grew up and, and, you know, before you get those connections and as you get those connections, let, let's go there. What, how, how does that start? Uh, yeah. So I was born in, um, in uh, Rockville, Maryland. Um, and I was there until I was three. Uh, and then I moved to New Jersey, um, Northern Jersey, like, uh, Paramus area, really close to New York city. Sure. Um, yeah, my, my, my dad worked in the city. He worked, um, for the largest, uh, Chinese newspaper in the U S it's called United daily news. And it's, um, he worked for a newspaper. He was the, uh, editor in chief. And then my mom worked for what is, what used to be, uh, what is now AT&T, but it used to be Bell Atlantic sure. um, out in New York. Yeah. And then um, I was there in Jersey until I was eight. And then I moved to Taipei because the paper headquarters was in Taiwan. Cool. And so because of my dad's work, uh, we all moved back to Taiwan. Um, and then from fourth grade until senior year graduation. So about nine years, I was in Taipei American school. So it's a international school. Um, 
much like the school I'm at right now. Yep. Um, and it was also like kindergarten through high school, um, all English speaking. You had to have a you know, foreign passport in order to attend the school, all English curriculum. And then I would say like 90% of the kids go back to the States for college. Yeah. And okay. so all growing, all throughout, grow, um, you know, my childhood, I pretty much lived um, in Taipei. Yeah. Well, I mean, from like, from, you know, born from, from when I was born until nine, I was in the States. And then from <laughs> nine until 18, I was back um, in Taipei. And that's uh, where I, you know, going back to college back in Maryland, I went back to, um, I, I attended uh, UMBC, University of Maryland, Baltimore County, um, a super small school. And the probably biggest thing that they're known for is upsetting Virginia in March Madness, I think like three years ago. Nice. Oh, they in the first round. In yeah. The yeah before, and then right. Virginia came that's back right. next year. That's sweet, dude. Good that for was you. The first proud time. proud yeah. alum. Proud alum. Yeah, that was that was the first time a 16 seed beat a one seed. Sure. Pretty epic. It was epic. It was insane. I went crazy. I was running through the hallways at school. People were like, what? Oh, sure, because it's the middle of the day. It's, it happens yeah. in the yeah. middle of the day for you, yep. too. And yeah. I wore a t-shirt out. I remember, um, like, it was like the weekend. I wore a t-shirt. I wore a UMBC retrievers teach us the mask i wore a umbc retrievers t-shirt out and someone asked me how was i able to get that made and i was like no man this is from this is og stuff oh, right here dude. <laughs> i honestly i would love all right so i'm really glad that we're talking about that game because uh, before we chatted today i don't jay ryan and i are michigan state grads and Ooh, maryland, I'm sorry. maryland beat the tar out of michigan state today and i was like I have a feeling this dude might have gone to Maryland. Like I just, yeah. I see, I saw it on your handle, you know. So I was like, I wonder what his Maryland connects are. But I, so, I let's talk way more about UMBC. I mean, that good for them. Good for them. yeah. So so UMBC, I was there for undergrad, and then um, I knew right. I knew in high school that I was going to be a teacher. That was really. Like, I was okay. I was student teaching because I mean I grew up in that environment. My mom worked at the school. She wasn't a teacher. She was actually the CFO at, okay. at the school, and so um, you know I was just around it all the time. Um, and when you work at an international school, the community is really your family. Like yeah. you see the teachers yeah. out. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not a. A lot of people compare it to like a DOD school, like Department of Defense, where you're like on the base it's not yeah, really no. like that yeah. um it's more like a part of the community like you're just you see the teachers out you see your classmates out because you're really mm. you're really it's not isolated but you're very like you're the american school and then you're in a foreign country so my you're family, really hanging Chile, out my, with my yeah. sister taught at an international school in santiago chile um oh, okay I, yeah i grew yeah, up yeah. in the middle east my parents taught uh, at a variety of these. So I fully appreciate what you're saying. Like, even if the husband isn't a teacher, like he, he's totally. a coach or something, totally. you know, like exactly. a very exactly tight knit right. community, yep. usually in a kind of foreign, semi foreign place. Yeah, totally. So um, I knew from an early age that I wanted to become a teacher. So um, at UNBC, my undergrad was psychology. And then I went to College Park for grad school. Um, and, uh, I got my teaching certificate with masters. And then it was funny because my first year, my entry meeting with my professor at college park, she's like, why do you want to become a teacher? I was young. I was stupid. I, I gave the most one equals the other. I, it's okay, Jay. I'm sure it was real brash. I, and cow, I so gave I the worst answer. I mean, I <laughs> came off so arrogant. It was <laughs> awful because she's like, why do you want to become a, a teacher? And I said, you know, I want to, I want to go overseas. I want to go overseas. I want to become an international school teacher. So I want to put in my time in the States and then I'm going to go overseas as soon as I can. I'm like, why is that? Why, why, you know, what is your draw for be, being an international school teacher? I said, because I want to go to Phuket and I want to drink Mai Tais in my summer and I want to enjoy and I want to enjoy my time off. 
and they, and she just looked at me. Good goals. Like, you just can't tell them that. Yeah, you can. You just, just can't tell them that. She just looked at me and was like, "Where's Phuket?" <laughs> <laughs> turns out, uh, turns out, not what they're looking for. For uh, and were seen you already you already in? Yeah, I got in. I got You're already in. in so yeah. <laughs> but wait a minute. Um, hold but, on, real yeah. quick. Because Jay, what you're saying right now, it's really important to point out. You do have to kind of do your time, and like yes. I hate to say it, but like normal schools, and and if right. you don't just of you don't just go and teach at one of no. these international schools straight 100%. out of even with a master's degree, right? One hundred percent. Okay. So I, I, I taught, like the confidence. I like that. No. So I taught <laughs> I taught uh, in Baltimore, uh, not not in the inner city, but um, in the suburbs. Uh, in an area called Columbia, Ellicott City. Um, and then I taught there for uh, four years. I taught fifth grade. Um, and then I know that at most of the big international schools, bigger ones, um, they ask for about, you know, at least like probably like four to five years of yeah. teaching experience with like good recommendations and, and all of those things. Uh, so I attended, a, after I put in my four years, I was, you know, I just wanted to test the waters. I wasn't like dead set on on moving yet, because um, I I really enjoyed working at my school. I wasn't like it's a, it's all or nothing international school. Yeah. Um, and so I just I, I went to Boston, attended a job fair, and um, ISS. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. Oh yes. man. You my know. wife has been to him. I I do know. Yeah. <laughs> ISS search. Yeah, you definitely know. And so um, went to a job fair. It was crazy because at the job fair, I just felt, I felt like I had a leg up and it was weird because I, I, I only had, you know, four, four years under my belt. I was not, I was not seasoned like some of the other teachers there. Some of them had been teaching in the States, you know, for 15 plus years, 20 years, but I bumped into my high school principal uh, in the elevator. Wow. Um, and, and he was like, Jay, what are you doing here? <laughs> you know, it was just like, we started chatting. He was like, what, let's talk. Just lost. High school e econ teacher was there. Um, he used some words that shouldn't be mentioned um, publicly, he, <laughs> he was like, I'm way too effing old to be here. If you're here now, like, I need to get out while I can. Um, yeah. And so I felt like really at home. I felt yeah, like man, I felt that's really, a nice I felt really boost. comfortable. That's a nice Yeah. Boost. I felt really comfortable. And then um, what helped me land the Shanghai job was I had an interview with uh, the international school in Beijing. And he said, you know, you're younger than what we're looking for, yeah. but what you yeah. provide is something that other people can't, which is you grad you graduated, you went through the ranks at a similar, almost, almost the same, right? Because even though they're not affiliated, pretty type sweet A's, to have your career, yeah, your yeah. alumni come back and want to yeah. teach there, like that's And a so they were like, even though it's not the same, it's not the same institution, but it's you know, it's the same. It's it's the same kind of education that you're going to get. And, and, you know, the parents, the faculty, they're going to eat that up, the kids especially. Sure. Um, and so when I went into my uh, interview with Shanghai, they asked me, you know, what do you think you bring to the table? And I just like, I was like, I, you know, I, I didn't graduate from Shanghai American School, but I am a product of the same education. And, you know, this is where it's gotten me. And, you know, I can relate with the kids. I can relate with the parents. I can relate with the faculty. I can relate with, you know, yeah. the people, like just the, the groundsmen even. Cause like I grew up in that whole environment, you know, for nine years and the guy, the, you know, at then the head of school is like, okay, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty yeah, good, man. No, right that's a good Much better than grad school, right? Yeah. Much better than the uh, Phuket to yeah. Mai Tai reference. Yeah. And so um, he, and so, you know, 2011, I moved out here and I've been here for 10 years now. Wow. You, I mean, that's a, actually, it's, it's not a straight line by any means, but like 
you've been pretty efficient. I'm trying to think. Yeah. So what you you know, grad school finishes up. You're 24 ish. You put in. Uh, let's see. Four I, years. When'd you move uh, back to? When'd you move back to Shanghai? Late 20s. Yeah, 30? 27. 27. Okay. Damn. I mean, dude, 27. When you showed up, you were the youngest teacher at that school, eh? Yep. Wearing you weren't wearing sneakers year one, were you? Uh, no, I was not. I was in a full. I was in a full tie, tucked in, dress in the part, yep. sure, pleated, man. pleated khakis for sure. Yeah, rightfully so. And like, I'm sorry, yeah. but there is a there's a a really nice um, like ebb and flow there. A little give and take, <laughs> right? Like, sure, you showed up, you got all that confidence, you know, you deserve that job. But then when someone gives you, you know, that opportunity, you know, it's okay to just dial it back a sure. little bit, yeah. you know, and you're still that guy, but I'll, I'll share that part of myself with everyone. Eventually they don't, they don't all need to know yeah. how excited I am to be here. How awesome right. this is. And, exactly. And, I fashion myself and, as a Jay Schwong. Uh, yeah. I also made the pivot to, to, it first started with ones straight up black on black ones a little bit here and there. Um, nice. But now I just really wear like sneakers. And um, now, you know, what has also helped people in our, um, our demographic J is the pivot from like the khaki to the like jean cut, not it's not a jean. And I assume this is, you know, probably, uh, probably a similar style, right? You like don't have to wear khakis miles. with sneakers yeah. anymore, right? You yep. don't have to have that front crease. Now you can wear that like kind of jean cut relax and so right, now right. i'm actually i'm going to minneapolis tomorrow and i was just uh i was deciding whether i wanted to risk bringing a pair of jays or not because it might snow on tuesday mm. so i think i decided no i have a yeah. couple pair i have a couple pair of like winter time ones but they're not they're not that fly just to be honest you know right. um, oh, see this is like i i am not i am i have like some love and respect and appreciation for sneakers, but I just don't, I have no knowledge base like you guys do. So I am just so enamored constantly by like how deep and like these sorts of conversations. I just love to be like, wait a minute, y'all are talking about that little piece of foam on threes. And you're like, yeah, yeah, you can't threes, man. They just, they wrote, you know, they don't not worth it. I'm just like, what you guys you're speaking this very 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 it's not even that much of a subculture anymore but i love uh i love to learn about it and like as an adult see how excited you guys get just to like have someone else to talk to about it like that's it's not that fun to just have a collection you look at yourself all the time like no, that's it's fun to share and show the idea that you're that teacher and sorry jay i did i didn't want to cut you off earlier but I did have to say, like, dude, the fact that you have, you know, you're leading, you're leading young people. Um, mm -hmm. They don't, no one's making them wear better shoes. No one's, you, you could be an asshole and they wouldn't be wearing nicer shoes. You know what right. I mean? But no, yeah. like the way that you are about it, the way that you're open about it, like, Jay, that's, that's why we're really talking today. It's not because I know about sneakers. It's because I found your feed and like visually it caught me. But then I, I kept reading your comments. I kept reading how, sorry, not to get, you know, too heavy with you here. I know we just met, but I'm like, this is like a really thoughtful dude. Like, this is someone who is actually interested in engaging with this world. Because in my experience, that sneaker world isn't like, hey, I want to hear what everyone thinks. You know, I yeah. like a lot of people yeah. want to make sure everyone knows what they think. You know, but right. you've just, I've always been like, damn this dude like he doesn't have a he doesn't seem to have an angle and everyone else well, showing these pics showing this kind of collection has a very different attitude about it no, you know and I you know because i don't have really i don't have a dog that. in the race you know yeah. what i mean i'm not getting paid by nike i'm not getting like paid by anyone like this is like my my instagram doesn't i don't get I don't get seeded stuff because of my Instagram. Like, it's just, I don't, I mean, to be honest with you, it's, I don't know how I got to 40 K because I don't, I don't do giveaways. I don't, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, 
do any of those gimmicks or bro, i don't you get en you engage bro like could you and i know you don't we won't talk about the social media a whole, whole lot here but you you do provide your commitment i mean are you like do you have a little bit of a discipline about it are you like i'm gonna make a post every day are you just really that you post it when you're looking at them in the morning and you feel like um i post probably like twice twice a day and okay. right now I'm, I'm in this like and the thing is is that all my routines with posting it's so like it's weird because it's just something I do like I'm like oh in the morning I'm gonna post about if you look at my feed recently it's every other feed because every other picture because in the morning I'll post about um one of my Jordan ones okay um and then and then you'll see at night which is my night your morning you'll be like oh okay that wasn't because I've been numbering them, I'll be like, oh, this is like the 30th pair in my collection that I want to talk about okay. today. Okay. But then like the nighttime post will just be like a random thing that's like coming out in China or coming out in Shanghai. And, and, and so Not necessarily your, your collection, but just yeah, similar content. Okay. Yeah. And so like my, my thing right now is that everyone wants to know what's coming out in, in China first, because we haven't had the delays in in releases that the states have okay. because, ah, because yeah, of, they're all being made there right i mean because yep because okay. of the weather because of covid because sure. they're being made here so we get so we haven't had those delays where it's like oh they were supposed to come out february 1st they're actually dropping march 30th now like what's up with that and um like we get them when they're supposed to come out and and it's it's crazy how people like, like dude you must be inundated that. with people looking for your content people that don't just aren't i'm i'm sorry i mean we this is a podcast ryan and i get you know we make no money off this but we obviously get entertainment out of this but mm -hmm. dude if you got forty thousand followers i can't help but assume thousands of them are bugging you constantly for a hookup where you know what i mean like that's got to be but, so annoying, right? Like, yeah, man, really can I just annoying. share my I, collection? Can't these are mine? They're not for you. Like, don't bother I, me. Because, because I mean, the new the new wave, and you know, Ryan, you might you might see this a little bit more often. Is that the new wave is a lot of resellers now? Yeah. Right. So everyone just trying like it's the same with cards. You guys probably noticed like the whole card. People are going on IG live and opening up packs of cards. Just yeah, to it's see crazy. It's like, oh, it's like I'm scratching just learning about that. Yeah. You know what I'm, I'm just, just like learning about that. It's insane. It's mad. Like baseball that. cards. Like yes. Basketball cards are back. It's the craziest thing, Michael. Like new it's ones. Oh, though. yeah. Like one of my colleagues. New cards. Oh, yeah. man. Okay. So there's two things I want to get on tip on two things. And, and Jay, I'm not sure if you know about the second thing, um, but the first thing is cards and card opening parties, right? One of my, yeah. um, pro probably a lot of your kids age uh, that you teach. Um, and one of my colleagues is telling me about where kids purchase cards, right? Or they purchase packs and then they're yep. open live and then yep. they send them out. And then there's another thing called top shots. You guys know about top shots? I've heard of it. I've heard of so that. Top shots. What is it? We have a friend who uh, coaches in the league. His name is Steve. He's been on the show, uh, Jay. And so I was talking to him the other day and he's told me, and so this likewise is no official sponsor, but basically Top Shots is digital, like ownership of digital um, clips of a dunk or a steal or something mm -hmm. like this. Um, and so I don't know how the licensing works. I'm not sure that you could license your card out to somebody else, but you're the person who owns that you know, numerical part of uh, somebody making a steal and performing a layup or something like that. Isn't so. that crazy? It's like it's how so crazy that that blows my mind. I mean, um, yeah. So the the whole the whole re reseller thing is more like people reaching out to me, not asking me to buy my shoes, but they're more asking me to like hey, can you send me like 15 pairs and we can work together on this? And I was oh, like, okay. nah, like that's, I'm not interested in doing that. And, and that's yeah. not my thing. And, and I have a full-time job with a, with a baby at home. Like I don't have the time to go out and come. If I came back home with like 17 pairs of shoes, my <laughs> wife would lose 
her mind. That's like, a lot of explaining be- just to sneak a couple <laughs> pairs a month in. I'm with you, Jay. I'm with you. I have a, uh, I have a, um, I don't know that I would call him a mentee, but like a, a kid who I've been working with, his name is Tyler and his uh, Instagram handles uh, Perch Kicks. And he sells like legit, I think he sold a thousand pairs of shoes in the last 12 months. And so yeah. he's one of those reseller kids. Yep. And it's a cool little business for a young person. I really yeah. think it is. Well, I, and I, and um, I totally get it. You know, it's, it's funny because a lot of people that have hit me up are, are younger people, 20, mm-hmm. like in college or in high school that are like, Hey, can you, can you send something my way? And, and then we can sure. like sell, I'll give you a cut. And I'm like, you know, just, <laughs> just from shipping alone. Cause it's expensive getting things to mm-hmm. the States from Shanghai. It, oh, it costs, it costs probably if I were to ship a pair of shoes, let's say a size 11, it would probably cost me 70 bucks. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think that's part of the exclusive exclusivity of what we're into though is that there's not a lot of like cheat codes around it. There's a lot of, you know, I you know retros or I'm sorry retros uh um fakes are a thing. And yeah. so, you know, there's there's that and that's a whole different market, but like there's not a lot of cheats around sneakers, you know. No, there um, isn't. No, I, I'm and especially especially to get pairs in bulk, right? Like mm-hmm. I like my cheat code would be my friends that work at Nike. That would be sure. a cheat code, right? Because they're going like, to give oh, you a couple pairs. I can give you your size, right? Yeah, yeah, um, one, like one maybe pair. Two pair. Yeah. yeah, one, one pair. pair, right? Right. Like, and so, like, that would be, I guess, you could call it a cheat code. How but, do those dudes get twenty pairs of a new release? How does that happen? I bots. mean, I see those posts. Is that um, what they're bots doing? and then backdoor deals with kids yeah. at um at stores, yeah. out the back yeah. door. A lot, of, a lot, a lot of bots, right? Like, size room. Yep. And so, like, they'll just scoop up everything from like a size seven to a size twelve, and they'll buy one of every size. Way harder to get a job at Foot Locker now than it was twenty years ago. Like, what sort of what sort of screens are they running on people? It's weird because so it's funny because in college I worked at Finish Line, and that was (laughs) that was in that was in two thousand six, right? So two thousand six, I worked at Finish Line, and um, it was it wasn't anything like it. Like you had to be there a couple of years or like a couple of, you had to pull rank in order to like get some of the limited stuff, but you for sure were able to get it. Mm -hmm. Like I remember it's a pair that's coming out. um, I think this year, end of this year is the Flint seven. It's like a purple and gray. Oh yeah. Purple and gray Jordan seven. And that was the first pair that dropped when I was at finish line. And at that time, like I said, I wasn't into Jordans. I was into basketball yeah. shoes. I was like, oh, new mellows are coming out. Everyone's looking at me like, what's wrong with this guy? Like, why why does this guy want basketball shoes when Jordans are coming out? And I was like, oh, like, can I get a pair? And they're like, you haven't, you haven't worked here long enough in order to to, to get that. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't think that that exists anymore because now people just sell them, right? Like if you worked yeah. there if you worked there, you'd probably pull your pair and then you just sell it. You just go out online, StockX, Goat, eBay, yeah. whatever, and just, and just sell them like right away just to earn 50, 60 bucks. Yeah. I don't know how they do it. I think they just fire those kids too. Once you get caught, it's, you know, uh, I mean, like, yeah, even, that's what I'm saying. Even, like, I wonder what sort of, all right. Even 15 super... years ago, inventory control is way different than it is now. Mm-hmm. You know, like, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, inventory control is such a different, because I had a friend, I had a friend that worked at Coach, uh, leather bags, mm-hmm. yeah. and if you worked at the store, you got forty percent off, and you're paying. I mean, you're talking about three hundred dollar bags. You got forty yeah. percent off. That that's huge, cash, different. bro. Yeah, that's that's. But but back then there wasn't a StockX or a Go. It was only eBay. It was yep. eBay and Craigslist, and mm-hmm. but they had people that were paid to scour those pages. The look for the resale. Okay. Yep. Yeah and yeah, then to track it coach. Up. yeah man like you're yeah. making you could you could very easily make more money <laughs> by buying <laughs> stuff with your discount and reselling it than you make as you know the the cashier for sure for sure all right i gotta go here because um well it's it's we've danced around it a little bit um i remember when you posted something about being reunited with your with your little yeah. one and i i'm sorry man like 
I need to hear a little bit more about, we don't need to do full, like, I don't expect you to cover COVID China. That's not why we got you on here, Jay, right. but you, what, went, went to visit the folks or something in Taipei? Yeah. Like, so, um, this is, so this, it's a crazy, crazy story. Um, so my wife, uh, Grace, she also works at the school with me. So she teaches second grade. I teach fifth grade. Um, so she nice. went back to Taipei. Both our family is from Taipei. And, and I didn't mention this earlier, um, but you know, this goes back with working with my students too, is that you never know who you're going to end up with. You never know who you're going to work for, work with, be the boss of, be your spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. But, um, so Grace and I were both at Taipei American school at the same time growing oh, up. Wow. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, That's awesome. I've known her, I've known her since I was in seventh grade. Um, now we weren't beat, like, Jay. you got me beat. We weren't together all this time, but she was my senior year winter formal date. Aww. So, and so, but we also, like I said, we weren't together. Like after that, you know, college, we went our separate ways. Um, I didn't get reconnected with her until 2013. Okay. So, um, you know, there's, there's a whole long like period of, you know, like just, yeah. The, when people are like, oh, I've known her since this long. It's like, oh, high school sweethearts. Like, no, 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 it's not. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, like no, that no, at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, Grace went back to Taipei. That's where both of our families are. Um, and she had the baby there. And okay. she was going to wait until Chinese New Year, which is the first week of Feb, um, for me to go back to Taipei. I was obviously there for when Catherine, um, our baby, was born. Uh, but okay. then I came back. I came back to once school started after winter to, to continue working. And then during Chinese New Year, I was gonna fly back, pick them up, come back to Shanghai. Um, I went back first week of Feb and I did not leave Taipei until September 2nd. Wow. So I was there for about seven months. All right, so you gotta help us and we'll, <laughs> and our audience understand. You know, it doesn't sound like it was out of convenience. Where what 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 were like the restrictions? Because yeah, you know, we're misinformed so, regularly yeah. here. Oh, no, totally, <laughs> totally, totally. Um, and so it's crazy because uh, I'll I'll do a final message when I'm done with the story. So I went back, and then that's right when we were hearing in Shanghai that there was like some sort of like virus going going around that yeah. would be potentially dangerous. And so at that time, Shanghai had nothing, you know, Beijing had nothing. We were hearing rumblings of like a small city in China, Wuhan. Well, yeah, I was going to say like, where, how, how far away is Wuhan? Like, I don't. That's... Oh, it's like a, it's like a, it's, I got to look it up, but it, I would assume it's probably like a six hour flight. Okay. yeah like so people in the united states from one side to the absolute other right at least <laughs> right, right, right. Is, it's yeah, not at least. it's not like a it's not like a 40 minute commute let's just no, put it that no, way no 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 different world and so, okay yeah and so we were we were like okay well it's good that we're that i'm out of there to avoid all that right now mm -hmm. um and hopefully you know it'll blow over by the time we come back um turns out that did not happen um and uh, Taipei did a very because Taipei is an, Taiwan's an island right so yeah. you got to think it's easier for them to close their borders than it is for like China or North America like or Canada like you just right. you're surrounded by water right so it's easy to just be like nope no one in no one out like that I can exactly. relate Jay I can relate yeah. exactly exactly <laughs> yeah. and so I was in Taipei. We had a we had a lockdown for two weeks. Um, you know, people were scrambling for for masks and alcohol and stuff like that. But r very soon, um, the government was the the president was like, you know, we need to we need to put restrictions on what you on people hoarding because people are hoarding toilet paper. It's just like the states, right? People yeah, hoarding yeah, yeah. paper. People are hoarding bread and milk and all sorts of stuff. And so they put very strict regulations. They're like. Um, everyone has like an ID card in Taiwan. It's like, if you have ID cards in odd numbers, you can come Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever. If you have ID cards with even numbers, then you can come Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, pick up what you need. Okay. So 
Um, we had a lockdown for two weeks, uh, right when I first arrived. And then after that, it was pretty much like contact tracing, you know, QR mask, mask, mask but mandated, not, but like, not locked. Yeah. You could leave your house, right? No lockdown. So like, it was re- like, I feel oh, for gatherings. Would they let um, you gather? No, like no, no, no gatherings. Um, but I mean, people were still going out, right? So it was yeah. like kind of like a little going to the grocery store, but everyone's wearing sure. masks and dude, yeah. it's, that's similar to here. It's very yeah, similar so, to here. And so, um, but the the mask thing was mandated. You couldn't ent- enter public buildings. No. You couldn't enter like a mall. Like all malls were like, you need to have a, a QR code saying that you've you know that you're healthy and no fever everyone's measuring taking your temperature with a temperature gun um you got to be masked up or you just can't enter and i think it's just a different mentality from being in the states because no one fought it you know like no one was like and jay i'm what? sorry you can't make me wear just this be, you can't make me do this to be clear are you talking about like february march of 2020 it was that dialed in like it yeah was it, that was, people it was were, very quick yep. oh sorry to say it but like obeying people were complying immediately yep. right 100%. like it was just okay that's and and we don't have to talk about the why but yeah that is significant and and taiwan up until maybe like three months ago they were leading for i think four months without and uh an outbreak four months without any new cases new documented cases none none zero zero new cases for like four four or five months wow Um, jeez i hope that um, when we get to look back at the history and you know i think you're being kind in the way that you're hinting around maybe some of the differences in the way that we've very diplomatic (laughs) which is kind and like this is not that kind of show and none of us here has that information data yet, but I sure hope that we get to get like a real global perspective on how like obeying versus being ignorant are two drastically different things. Right. You know? And um, so this is, this is when it started getting um, complicated was when, we had a, a window of opportunity to make it back to Shanghai. Um, but that was in the, the heat of when it was the worst because it had just gotten to the States. And so it was blowing up in the States. It was around early March to mid-March. It was just getting to the States and people were panicking because a lot of people during Chinese New Year left because they, they had heard there was the virus in China. And so a lot of our teachers went back home to the States. Okay. Um, And so like they, they, they like were running from it. And then all of a sudden they had to like run back, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, But by that time, China had closed its borders. Oh man. So, so a lot of people got stuck. Yeah. That's what I'm like, man, Taipei was one thing, but you couldn't get back into, you couldn't get back into China. Right. Like I couldn't get back. So we, so the the school gave us an opportunity. They were like, you know, right now, um, there, there weren't as many cases in the States. It was like, we were assuming it was coming, but no one could make that prediction. And so we, Grace and I felt like it was the safest to just stay where we were at. We didn't choose to go back to Shanghai. um, But because of that, I got locked out. Like, so I couldn't, so we did distance learning up until, you know, june from march from march all the way until june about three months of distance learning um our school you know shanghai american school opened back in may so like we actually were were able to open again like things because the way shanghai handled it was just as you know efficient like qr codes everywhere super aggressive right away yeah okay yeah but it cleaned it up really aggressive yeah cleaned it up um and you know and, and I know there's a lot of sentiment about like, oh, it's, a, you know, it's, it's communism there. That's why you can, you can control it. That's why, you know, they just tell you what to do and you, they say jump and you say how high kind of thing. Um, but I think in, in, in this sense, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that mentality just because when you're doing it for the safety of yourself and others, I think that it's a, it's a necessary kind of, 
uh, sacrifice. risk. Yeah, sacrifice. Exactly. Sacrifice, not risk. Right? A sacrifice. Were they, te- that, that were they testing was a lot? So, if you don't mind me yep. asking, or for our listeners, what what was the QR code qualifying for the QR code? What yeah. Was so, um, in Shanghai now, even even to this day, um, like we went to a mall last night you had to show a QR code and the QR code shows that you've been in Shanghai for four, for the last 14 days. Mm-hmm. So it's basically contact tracing. If you show yeah. green, that means you've been in the city of Shanghai for the past 14 days, um, which means that you haven't gone out to a high risk area because Shanghai is considered low risk. Um, so if I were to like fly to, you know, a different city, my QR code would change because it would show that I am not currently in Shanghai anymore. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And so, um, so different. Uh, yeah, That's, but not, dude. I, and I'm again, I hate to keep being like, huh, huh, dude. It, and the only reason why we do it in Hawaii is because we can, it's an island, they can right. very much. But it's, I mean, you need a QR code to land in Hawaii now, mm-hmm. and yeah. it's the exact same thing. Like, the, the biggest thing here, Jay, is you need to be tested and prove you're clear within 72 hours of right. getting here. But yeah, like just w- the general, what you're describing as very, very um, almost, almost militarized level of, listen, everyone give up a little bit or else we're all going to have to give up everything. Mm-hmm. That right. is very much in Hawaii too, man. That, that was yeah. from the get go. What do you mean we can't go to the beaches? Well, we can't go to the beaches. That's what. We're yeah. Doing. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay. yeah. And so, and so in June, um, no, uh, yeah. Around, uh, June time, you know, the school was, we were missing a lot of teachers. And so they, Grace has a, um, a, a Taiwan passport. She's a Taiwan passport. So does the baby. The baby has both us and Taiwan, but Taiwan is able to travel between Shanghai, uh, China and Taiwan. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. And so they were able to fly back. And so we sat down and we talked about it. We're like, hey, we've been living, like we have family in Taiwan, but we weren't living at home. We were living at an Airbnb because oh. just we wanted our own space and, yeah. you know, we just didn't want to be um, a nuisance to anyone. So we did our own thing for seven months, uh, six months. And and so, you know, that was an ex- an expense that no one could account for. Yeah, and that's Gilligan's we, Island, man. Yeah, that is not fun. I mean, I bet it wasn't fun after a couple of weeks. I cannot yeah. imagine. So sure. we, we sat down and we talked and we like, okay, so how is this going to work? And they're like, well, um, we both agreed that Grace should go back because she could start the year and she could start working. Um, and and then Catherine could go back and actually like be at home for like the home that we provided for her before she was yeah. even born plan. Yeah. We, we had bought duplicates of so much stuff because we she was only supposed to be a Weeks, month old maybe. before we brought yeah, yeah was, before I we brought her back and all her baby stuff like she outgrew everything like her you know crib that we bought her didn't fit anymore and all this stuff and and so we were like okay you know what we probably just have to buckle down and, and be separated for a little bit just so you guys can live comfortably again. Mm-hmm. Um, so they left in June, back to Shanghai. Um, yeah, major props to to Grace for holding it down because she had to bring the baby through quarantine. You know, she had to like do all that stuff. A, a five month old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to a new mom, like yeah. oh man, yeah, yeah. No, that's a props, props. Well, much deserved. Yeah. And so, and so I moved back home and I was in Taiwan by myself, you know, with my family, obviously from June until September when they finally opened the borders and I got a visa and I was able to go back. Did you move out of the Airbnb and move back in with your folks? Immediately. Like the same day. (laughs) Yeah. Right. The same day that I took them to the airport. I'm like, I'm out of here. Cannot do this anymore. No. Yeah. It's, it's not fun living in someone else's place, you know, like, don't get me wrong. I bet it wasn't awesome living in a, under your parents' roof again, either. No, but it was weird. At least it was like there's, there's like a semblance of comfort. There's moments of comfort, right? When I you're mean, in that foreign spot after yeah. hotel room after three days, to me is like the most depressing place in the world. <laughs> I mean, it was, it, I had flashes of that scene in, um, 
in uh, Wedding Crashers when Will Ferrell's like, Ma, me loaf. <laughs> me loaf yeah. ma. All right. Hey, we all revert. <laughs> That's why it's so damn funny because we all revert, man. We all revert. It is It yeah. is so true about how quickly you revert back to like a, it's like it's almost terrible. like a, a part of your childhood like comes back. You may not like or even ever want to see no, that part of your no. childhood again, but when you spend extended times with your parents, especially in their domicile, it brings that kind of, you know, I mean, strange it, thing back. I had never played so much video games in my life before and at the you're age revert. of 30 37 yeah, well, not since you were yeah. not since you were 14 it. you know not since you were 14 and that you uncovered space. your sega genesis out of the uh out of the <laughs> yeah. closet Just there blowing like, nes uh, cartridges and stuff like that right right oh man oh well i hate that this episode has to come to an end this is like oh, this has man. been such a cool and casual time to talk to you um about like the experience through that um i'm, I'm glad that we got to fit the 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 end part in and um i appreciate you coming through on the it's it's weird when uh mike introduced you to me he said this is like your reciprocal is like the uh the pacific version of you it's like your doppelganger <laughs> the tattoo yep the doppelganger the tattoos oh, yeah. the sneakers kind of the coaching i also uh i'm not coaching currently because of covid um uh, same thing gotta find a place to coach but like all that same thing so it's so cool um and i hope we get to welcome you back sometime man this is, you no know, i would cool. you know what um uh michael i i really appreciate you reaching out um you know uh i've had the opportunity of a couple of podcasts being like hey um we would love to talk to you and then like them radio silence for like six months and i'm like <laughs> okay like that sure you know um yeah. But, you know, he sent like this, like really long email and I was like, whoa, okay, these guys. And then I, I went ahead and I listened to a couple of episodes um, oh, on, on the website. I'm um, definitely listen to the sneakerhead one. Um, and <laughs> oh, and sure. I was like, man, I was like, these guys are like, they just seem like really genuine people. And um, I'm glad that, you know, Ryan, I found my counterpart in uh, Detroit. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I really appreciate being able to to get on uh with you guys and you know because i'm not i'm a sneakerhead but i'm but i do like that's my second thing you know what sure. i mean like like i'm a teacher i'm a coach like i i don't i don't do social media for a living i don't sell shoes i don't i'm not uh like always about that and I, and I hate to, to sound like those sneakerheads where it's like, I hate that term sneakerhead. I'm not a sneakerhead. I'm an OG, right? Like, I don't yeah, uh, no. like, um, like get no, off my a, lawn. Uh, no, bro. Get, you're, get you're off my grown, lawn. Okay. Sorry. And this isn't to diss the sneakerheads out there, but like you're, you're a grown up with a, with a full ass life. And, you know, sneakers are part of it. And sure, you got a lot of passion and excitement and, you know, love through that world. But, I, I don't want to put you in any corner, Jay. Like what you shared with us today is like, it'd be foolish for anybody to try. I, I honestly, man, like this came through. I had some butterflies. I had some butterflies before today's interview, but it, it just, you came through so sincerely and just exactly, exactly as, as I kind of expected. And that's very rare to, to actually connect with the person in real life that you met and social media, literally thousands and thousands of miles away. So I'm, uh, I'm not patting myself on the back at all here. I'm just glad I did reach out to you. And I just feel real, real fortunate that you, that you reach back and, you know, you took that, you took that olive branch, bro. It's, it's I think it's part of what we get you. to do on the show is yeah. to, you know, one of the worst things you could do to a human is generalize him or her. It really is. And so, I, I'm really glad that you added that last part about the sneakerhead part, right? Because even if you go back and you listen to this right now, and this is the first convention odd episode you listen to, um, because you're part of Jay's crew that that you know picked up on it and listened mm -hmm. to the episode. Um, one of the things that we've always fought through the years is the idea, and when we select the guests and we get to find people and meet people, is that the idea that you fit this like piece because of something that is an outward view of you. Um, and a lot right. of times that does end up with people who have these cool social media followings, even greater than Mike or mine, 
you know, like that's never been part of either of our things. It certainly isn't a part of like the bigger, bigger part of the show, but the show is pretty successful just because I think people search the terms often about like what we talk about. Um, right. which is inspirational stuff and it's it's kind of like getting into something that like doesn't fit the mold and, and and getting past like the idea that humans don't fit molds and like why they don't fit molds and what that means to people um because i think so many of us you know it's probably a mistake to know you as the teacher with the sneakers it's just yeah. you know it's it's um it's something that you know i think if we could all as humans take a little bit more time to do um we're better for it so thank you so much i know you're headed into your week here um so i'm so happy yeah. to, to hear i wish that. it was sunday still <laughs> yeah yeah i gotta go at like a, a crack of dawn flight to minneapolis where the uh temp is going to be below what what anybody wants to do so yeah. before we do cut out here though let's 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 do this um we just talked about social media give us that 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 uh handle one more time and if i want to follow you and and why i would follow you um, cause I think yeah, that's important. Um, You're not a sneaker plug. That's, that's the thing, you know, for but sure. more than that. And for I have sure. Jay, Jay, one more thing we, because like I said, my wife is a teacher. We talk about education and you know, the various, <laughs> like your path is, is a dream path for a lot of educators, man. So I also want to say to like, if you don't mind sharing some of your contact info, I mean, you're where yeah. a lot of people really want to be, bud. So for sure, no pressure. For sure. Um, yeah. So uh, my IG handle is uh, Shanghai Soul, uh, Shanghai, Shanghai China, uh, S O L E, and um, yeah, follow me if uh, if you like shoes, obviously, but not not to get a biased opinion on anything, right? Like um, you know, like I said, I, I I do it for fun. I do it because it's something I like to share. Um, if you're interested in what's happening out in, in China and in Asia, cause I, you know, when we were able to travel a lot, I would post like where in Asia. Cause I mean, I used to travel to Tokyo a lot. Um, you know, I'm always in Taipei. So I'm always showing things from, you know, different, different countries. Uh, we travel for basketball. So I'm always trying to visit, like see sneaker shops uh, nice. during our travels and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I know people in the States are worldwide are just really curious about that. Um, and if you have any questions about uh, teaching, definitely um, reach out because I know a lot of people are still like a little intimidated by it, you know, teaching, like being in a foreign country, um, you know, being away from family. Um, you know, I think the decision was a lot easier for me and my wife just because our family is in Asia. Right. So it, in, in some ways we moved closer to home yeah. coming out here. Um, so, but I mean, uh, it's, it's a very awesome opportunity to open your eyes to traveling in different cultures, uh, whether you're in Asia or Europe or South America or the Middle East. Um, it's an awesome experience. But you can hit me up at uh, shuang, S-H-U-A-N-G dot J-A-Y at gmail.com. And I can uh, pass along some of those uh, ISS links. And I'm sure Michael has contacts to those too. And <laughs> yeah. But yeah, just uh, I, I look forward to talking to you guys again, man. I really appreciate the opportunity to talk more about sneakers, which is something I don't really get to do that often. Same. This, this will not, this guaranteed will not be the last time we chat, Jay. So on that note, I'm going to let you uh, go kick another week's ass. Wait, yeah, I said that right. Yep. And uh, yeah. thank you, Jay. Really, really appreciate it, bud. We'll be in touch. Appreciate it, guys.